okay, I'm going to take this mask off because we're practicing social distancing here at the private industry council, but um, I've got my distance from nobody around me. Uh, I want to say good morning. My name is Tim Yerkeson. I'm the president and CEO of the Private Industry Council, and I want to welcome you to our virtual open house on the next greatest thing at the Private Industry Council, STEM classrooms for preschoolers. We're here today at Lamont Furnace. Uh, we built this building in 2015, and actually gotten some pretty good national attention for what we're doing in this building. We've got five Head Start classrooms downstairs, and workforce development and uh, what we call career link here, our one-stop shop for employment and training on the second level. So where in the country, other, other than Uniontown, Fayette County, Pennsylvania, come on, bring a child to Head Start, go up to the second floor, get adult training, and also get a job. But today we're, get, we're here to talk about science, technology, engineering, and math. And at the Private Industry Council, we are responsible for 1,700 preschoolers every day, and these kids are gonna have one fantastic time in these STEM centers. So actually there are three of them, as we are here with uh, at Lamont Furnace, we also have uh, a similar center at the Connorsville Township uh, Elementary School, and also up at Beaver Valley Mall in Manaka for our Beaver County Head Start children. And I understand that a little bit, we'll be headed up that way so that you can see what we're doing at the Beaver Mall and talk to our CE manager, which is Samantha Nicholson. But right now I want to uh, introduce you to our host today. His name is Colin Beatty. He is our instructional technology supervisor. He designed and prepared this room for these kids to have a lot of fun. He's gonna talk about the tools and resources and the capabilities of the room. And so without further delay, I'm gonna turn the uh, session over to Colin. Colin, let us show us all about the great, the next best greatest thing at the Bradford Industry Council. Thank you, Tim. Good morning, everyone. Um, and thank you all for attending uh, the Private Industry Council's virtual open house. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my mask now, just so that way it's easier to speak to everyone. Um, my name's Colin Beatty. I'm uh, Private Industry Council's Instructional Technology Supervisor. I've been with the Private Industry Council for, uh, for two years and um, I, uh, I went to California University where I studied technology education. So, um, you know, STEM concepts and STEM education is kind of in my, uh, my background. So the purpose of uh, creating these rooms, um, there's been an increase in, in like talk and um, in STEM education, um, STEM related jobs. Um, there's been a huge influx. So with, uh, according to the United States uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics for uh, 2016 and to 2026, they're anticipating um, job growth to increase by 7.4%, where STEM related jobs are anticipating for an increase of 10.4%. Um, building these rooms, um, you know, with PIC, uh, we believe in preparing our children for the best future possible. Um, we built these rooms in mind to give children an early start um, to expose and introduce them to STEM concepts that they may, uh, may face later on in their education uh, studies. So it kind of ties in with what our uh, mission statement is here at Private Industry Council that we're building uh, tomorrow's workforce through early childhood education and business services. Um, the rooms were designed, I'm gonna take you through a little tour now. The rooms were designed with um, a STEM theme in mind. So um, your traditional preschool classroom, we have uh, you know our dramatic play area. This is traditionally 
a kitchen or household uh, themed area, but in our STEM room, we've converted that into a laboratory production area. So kids can go and do some research, pretend, um, you know, play as a, uh, a STEM, STEM related job. They can be a laboratory scientist, they can be a construction worker, they have a workbench here for all their uh, experiments and research. They have a, um, a lab refrigerator to keep all their um, test tubes. Um, they have their beaker system here. Um, we have, instead of our uh, regular art area, we have a drafting table and um, maker space where kids can go and design their projects and proceed to build them with the makerspace items. Um, and with, you know, with STEM and all the different activities, um, we want it to be flexible. So we went with the flex space furniture where our uh, furniture is on wheels and we have wobble stools for the kids to sit in. So our tables, you can rearrange them and move them. So if teachers need to, uh, have a large group activity, they can bring all the tables together. If they need to have small groups, they can spread them out. So it's, this room's very accommodating for whatever a teacher could possibly need, you know, whatever their lesson demands. Um, so with, uh, with that in mind, um, the kids are gonna be working on different STEM skills in this room. Um, they're going to be learning about physics, speed, momentum, gravity, uh, engineering design. They're going to work on critical thinking, planning, problem solving, uh, brainstorming. Um, they're going to be ex exposed to uh, coding and programming concepts through robotics. Um, and they're also you know, going to work on mathematics and even literacy, uh, they're gonna be exposed to a wider range of vocabulary, uh, talking about like simple machines, uh, wedges, um, cause and effect. So um, there's definitely a lot, a lot of value in this room that's gonna provide kids with a uh, better academic uh, future. So with that in mind, um, I want to take you around and kind of discuss some of the activities that we have and give you a little demonstration. Um, here we have our, it's called chain reaction. If you're familiar with, um, it's a Rube Goldberg that the kids will be you know, constructing and working on. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what a Rube Goldberg is, it's a series of events that completes a simple task. So our activity here, the goal of it is to flip uh, the flag up. So kids will follow you know, the picture card design to get started, but after a while, after they've been working with it, they can go design their own tracks and you know, make adjustments and um, essentially follow the engineering design process to you know, perfect their, uh, their product. So we have, I'm gonna drop a ball. And, and you we won. have, what's that? <laughs> <It's really fun. laughs> yeah, no, it worked. So, um, you know, with kids working on this, they may need to make fine adjustments if they don't get it right the first time. So they have to go back and replan, readjust. Um, it definitely, uh, you know, they'll be working on skills in um, fine motor. They'll be working on, um, planning, design, so definitely a lot of good that'll come from that. I'm excited to see what the kids are gonna do with it. Um, over here, I'm gonna cover our various robotics that we have. Um, so when researching like age-appropriate uh, robots for early childhood, um, it was a bit of a, uh, it was a challenging uh, task to complete, so, um, you know, selecting these robots, I wanted to keep in mind, like, is it age appropriate? Um, you know, is there a screen to it? Because, you know, screen time is a big topic in early childhood. Um, and 
we didn't want to have any conflicts with that. So we have the Lego Coding Express, we have the Bluebot, Kiba, and Cubelets. So I'm going to go around from least difficult to most difficult, um, just to show you the progressional stages that children are going to be exposed to this and how they're going to work up to um, you know, perfecting their coding skills. So the Lego Coding Express, we have the train here on a track that will go over these little tiles. And whenever it goes over the tiles, it reads the chip that's on the inside. Um, and it'll, you know, the train will interact with that and either make a sound or stop or change its uh, directional course. Um, Lego designed this with early childhood in mind. They wanted to introduce kids to early coding concepts, um, you know, how coding works, but also to focus on social emotional development, um, social studies. You know, the kids can go and make their track, but you know, what's the environment that the track is going through? So to get the train started, you just give them a little push and it starts. So it's picking up gas. Stops here to pick up the passengers and give it another little push. And now it's going to change its course. So this is something, you know, for um, for the kids to get introduced and started with coding. I'm going to take you over here now. We have our, our blue bot. This is a robot to teach kids directional programming. So they'll learn up, down, left, and right. Um, the kids will go and turn it on. And this is something that teachers can go and set up a, uh, you know, a maze or like a little map for them to work on. So the kids will type in the code in which direction they want it to go. And then after their code's done, they'll go and press go. And that sound means that our, uh, our code is done. So if they wanted to type a new code or you know, keep the same code, they can do that. So our next robot feature is Kibo. Kibo is a, uh, a robot designed by Kinder Lab Robotics. Uh, he's got interchangeable motors and sensors um, that easily pop off and snap on. Um, he's got a wood wood frame to um, So the way Kiva works is children will lay out their, their coding through these different coding blocks. So they'll rearrange their codes, line them up, turn Kiva on, and we can see he's got a little scanner. The kids will go and scan each individual barcode to get Kiva programmed, and then they'll press the his uh, button to get started, and he's waiting for a clap now because that's the beginning of our program. So now Kiva is going to go through his uh, cycle. So this kind of introduces kids to you know, not only a different style of coding, but it also introduces how sensors work with their code, how um, different objects can be controlled through coding. Um, so it'll, you know, it takes it another step further from what the blue block was. Now we have our, our cubes. These are um, individual cubes that have computer sensors in them. Um, they're magnetically joined. We have our different blocks. We have our uh, our sense block, which is you know a, it's a sensor. It's going to tell the robots what to do. Um, 
we had a large power block here that powers up all these different sensors and uh, in, uh, indicators. Um, we have our um, our act blocks. We have our um, blocks that will, you know, when they detect something through the sense cube, it's going to uh, interact and uh, change. So I have two motors on the bottom. I have a bar graph. I have a rotating motor here. And I also have a light at the top. So um, this black, uh, black block is a um, distance sensor. So if I put my hand here, the robot will start going away and it will start rotating. So you can see the, the level of input as I get closer and if I back off. So and kids can, there's uh, 20 different blocks that kids can go and customize and change what uh, the robots are like, what they're gonna do. Um, the different blocks interact with each other in different ways. Um, but the big thing here is kids will learn coding concepts with no restrictions on screen time. Um, but overall, you know, the kids are going to be learning all the different STEM skills that they need to succeed um, throughout their uh, school years. So that's... Um, that's what I have for you. I'm going to go and uh, pass it off to our uh, friends up in Beaver County. So, Samantha, if you want to take it away. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Sam Nicholson, and I'm the CDE manager for our Beaver County Head Start and Early Head Start. Um, so I'm just going to take you a little tour. Our room is very similar, but there are some differences just a little tour and then show you how a couple of things work. Um, I'm also going to demask so that you can hear me a little bit better. Okay, so the first area that we have is our um, art area. It is a little bit harder to see on camera, but um, we do have all of the same materials that we would have in a classroom, but then there are some extra um, things that we don't always have, like the tinkering toolbox, which has different um, tools so that you can build and like make robots and get really creative with it, um, with things that we don't normally play with in the classroom. So that makes this area a little unique. Um, and then instead of just your regular art table, we have the um, drawing board, Colin has a very specific name for it, but it's like a drawing board where you can come over here and sketch what you, you know, want to do and how to make that come alive. Um, same thing as the classroom, we do have our sensory table and we do have a lot of really neat sensory items that we can change out. Right now I have um, the foam buildings in here so you can like build a whole little city. Um, to put together, you know, a whole little city and however you would like that to look. Um, we like the children to use their imagination. Um, then we go into our dramatic play area. Um, we do not have the regular kitchen materials with the refrigerator and the microwave and the sink. Um, but we do have like a special toolbox where you can build. Um, you have different puzzles that you can put together um, for all kinds of different jobs that, that are outside of our normal. We have in the classrooms a lot of firefighters and construction workers, but these ones are a little bit different for scientists and exploring and using magnifying glasses. There's one for building a house and how to do that. So there are different puzzles. And then we do have some unique um, dress up clothes where you can be an astronaut and there are different things there. Um, this is one of my favorite toys I did get to play with a little bit and you can build, there's actual little people um, and you can just build on it. But they all, it's a, like a pegboard, so they all stick. And, and there's like even a little slide and you can make a playground, you can build your school, whatever it is that you may want to do. And then 
So we have our traditional um, math manipulatives and science um, table toys, but the toys inside of the centers are a little bit different. There are some that are similar to our regular classrooms, but then there are other ones as well. So we have a lot of different science stuff that we normally wouldn't see in our classrooms. There's some beakers that you can use. Um, there's a whole like science discovery chest and then everything comes, like all materials come with little learning pamphlets, which I find really cool because the teachers can use them to talk with talking points for the children. So it's the same as our creative curriculum. We use our lesson plans um, when we're teaching the children, but these have like very specific standards that you can use. Um, and like some of the cool things about the toys, like this one's a create a maze and it has a card that tells you, can you guide the ball from one goal to the other, have the ball, ball touch each piece. So you have to like figure out how to make that ball touch each piece on the one end to the other end. And it does take some time, like me as an adult, it even took me some time to like figure out how to get that to move. But there are many different cards like this that you can use throughout. Um, this is our light table. We do have um, some tabletop light tables in all of our classrooms here in Beaver, um, but this one is just a little more advanced than those. Um, and there are a lot of different materials that go with it. It illuminates, it makes it um, kind of exciting. It's just a different way of building and a different way of seeing the materials. Um, we have to get creative with our children. So if we do the same thing every single day, they're gonna get bored with it. So this is just like another way to be a little bit more creative with that. Um, so then we move into our next center, which is our block area and also our circle time carpet. So we kind of double utilize this area um, and it has all different types of blocks that you can build with. We also have the really big foam blocks. Um, they have them at the Children's Museum and it's always like really fun to play with them because they're massive. They actually take up the entire area when we bring them out. And so multiple kids can play with them and build up. And you can get it up pretty high when you're building with them. Um, and they're, they're big. Um, and we also have our regular wooden blocks, but then we have other tools that you can use and um, tinker around with and get them to move up and down, like with the crane and trying to figure out how those work. Um, so one thing that I wanted to demonstrate is our, and I'm going to turn it so that everyone can see, is our roller coaster. Um, and so again, it comes with teaching cards. So huh, it was a hard one. I didn't even pay attention when I was building it. But <laughs> that could be why it took a few minutes <laughs> to, to build. It's a number level 10, I guess. <laughs> but it shows you how to build it. And then so you follow your card, your teaching card, and then you can try it. And so it takes a couple of tries to get it right. So frustrations can happen. So we want to work with our children to teach them how you know to handle those frustrations, how to try again when we don't do it correctly, because it took me a couple of times to build this one. Um, and these are just our extra pieces. But you can have two children playing with this at the same time and using the, the cards. Um, we also saw our train here and we just did um, a little bit different of a design, um, had it go around in a full circle. It is really cool with the coating as Colin mentioned. Um, you have these little blocks that help train the, um, I call it a metro, but I guess it's a train, um, <laughs> a metro train. Um, all of these have different meanings and they train the um, metro what to do. So as it goes over each one, it does something different. So it could stop to get um, fuel, it could stop uh, to make a sound. Um, there's one that makes it completely stop. There's one that turns on the lights. And then there is also one that makes it go a different um, route. So I'm just gonna see, um, just let it kind of go. So it already changed direction and is going the opposite way. And we turned on the lights and then it made like a little like choo-choo noise whenever it hits the yellow. And it'll stop to fuel over here at the water. 
which is really neat. And then you can get it to just continuously go around. You can try different things. Um, there are three different train track setups that you can use, but you don't have to do that. We can still be really creative and build it however we want. Um, and the kids can do this one on their own, or they can do it with a, a teacher as well. Um, but there are more pieces that go to it. These are just some of them that we wanted to feature. Um, there's like a little fishing rod, a gas station, um, a construction zone, the airport. There's like a little guy with briefcases there and an airplane um, with that. So I'm just going to let it stop itself when it gets back to the, that area. Um, one of my favorite um, teacher directed toys that I've had a chance to play with with um, some of the children in, in my home. Um, was the earthquake kit and um, we were able to go through and ask like different questions and um, we talked about earthquakes, what an earthquake is, um, how earthquakes can help us, how they can hurt us, some safety measures to take when an earthquake may happen and then also it just kind of really teaches you how to build um, different things and you can turn the earthquake meter up from a level one to um, a level five. And it was just really neat to play with the other child when doing that because he would say to me, oh my goodness, it lasted on a level five. I like, I built this and made it last that. And so that was really unique, but then he built something that wouldn't even last on a level one. <laughs> so he was just like, oh my goodness, <laughs> like, why? I can't believe that that fell over. Why did it fall? So we talked about that and we talked about the higher the building that you build, the more of a chance it is for falling down if you have like a more surround um, structure. And this child was five. So that's right around the age of children that we will have um, in our classrooms. And we're just really working with them to get that creativity thinking and using the different language um, than our same everyday language. So I built this one just as an example. I'll put it on um, like a level two earthquake and just to see if it will, you know, survive. So there were parts of it that survived, but really just the very bottom part. So we would talk about that with the children when building it. Um, on, you know, how we can rebuild it the next time to survive. Maybe we should build the same one, try it at a level one, how we can improve on that one. Um, so that's really all um, we have here in Beaver. Um, this is our STEM room classroom. Our teachers will be trained on how to utilize all of the materials in the classroom. Um, and we will be taking field trips. So our children will go from their regular ed classroom to this classroom about every, we're hoping every six weeks or so, so that we can have this fun and exciting field trip to do something different. And they'll just have their whole class here this day. We have, um, we built a kitchen in here so that we can have lunch and breakfast, the same as we would do in our regular ed classrooms. So it'll just be something fun and exciting for the other children. Um, so I'm going to turn it back over to Colin, and uh, have a good day, everyone. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah, we're back here, and we, we're in the chemistry lab. And we're trying to do our, our uh, mad scientist experiment. Yeah, so we're going to, uh, we have two liquids here for you. We're going to demonstrate some, uh, we have water and soda, and we have an additional beaker with uh with water, so we're going to pour them through our um, our beaker system to uh, to see what happens. So, um, and we don't want... have any dishwashing liquid or, or Elmer's glue. Right. <laughs> so, what do you want me to do? So, here? Tim, you're going to go ahead and you'll take the top one, and I'll go and pour it in the bottom. So, kids, whenever they're playing, they can go and. Um, They can pour their liquids in and see what happens if uh, there's a chemical reaction or if uh, they're steaming up. I tried to take my, my mask down and my glasses were steaming up. And we can see too that the... Uh, I, think the I think the Coke's hanging at the bottom here. Yeah, so we can see the, uh, you know, the Coke has a, uh, a thicker viscosity than what the water does. So it, um, you know, it was slower to pour, but our uh, our experiment 
we have some uh, tinted yeah. water. <laughs> <laughs> we have some tinted water, but no, um, you know, with these rooms, um, we definitely, uh, we thank you for, you know, attending um, the virtual tour. Um, you know, for more information, um, go ahead and check out our website at uh, privateindustrycouncil.com or our Facebook page for uh, additional, uh, you know, if you have any questions or, um, you know, want it, more information on it. Very good. Good job, Colin. Everybody stay safe right. and healthy out there. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. Thank you all.